How concerned should we be about deep fakes and where is the line between restricting them and restricting free expression? The overview, Microsoft recently announced that it has partnered with the organization Stop NC, I'm gonna say that's II, which stands for Stop Non-Consensual Intimate Image Abuse to remove intimate non-consensual images and deep fakes from the Bing search engine. This comes on the heels of an effort by the Federal Communications Commission to finalize a rule mandating that all broadcast ads featuring content that is made by AI include a formal disclaimer. That's interesting. There is also currently a bipartisan, uh, bipartisan bill in the Senate that would ban AI deception in political ads. Senator Josh Hawley, a co-sponsor of the legislation, said, let's not allow these same companies that control social media technology in this country that control the news in this country to also now use AI to further their hammer hold on the United States of America and our political process. How concerned should we be with AI and deep fake technology and where do rules regulating it veer into restrictions on free expression? Damn, that's a good topic. Yeah, it's it's deep. To go to go into it, it's um look the many industries have been dealing with deep fakes forever. I mean, Photoshop changed the landscape of people faking things, whether it was like, you know, churching up a photo, um, doctoring a, a face onto another face. Photoshop and images has always been a thing. And it's not, it's not able to be regulated because it's so much information, so much data. And to be honest, so many people who are doing it underground, I mean, look at the dark web and try to go after people who are doing deep fakes. And, and also it's a form of art form as a justification. Um, I heard Rogan talking about it on a recent podcast where somebody manipulated his podcast with Tucker Carlson and made it seem like it was an argument. That's a form of a fake, but the guy's doing it in the name of comedy. So it's like, where do you draw the line? And, you know, there, there's the threat of using your identity, but that already happens, right? That already happens and it exists now. I just don't think, I, I'd be interested to hear your take on it. Uh, even when, it, like, somebody, say somebody did a deep fake of you and a guest and it was fake, where would you draw the line between art and entertainment and, like, oh, my God, like, this is not okay? Man, I don't know. I mean, art and entertainment is obviously so wildly subjective, right? Like I am not, a, I've been to museums, I've looked at art. It doesn't speak to me in the way that it does to some people, but I also think that's the way of art or maybe even music or performance. It's in the eye of the beholder. So I don't even know if you can draw a line between art and comedy. I think the line that is in question here is, is it legitimate or is it something that has been produced and therefore no longer valid through the lens of the people who are viewing it? I think that's where, is it real or to use the term itself, is it fake? I think that's the tough one. And I never thought very much about deep fake technology. I had heard some stories recently, and unfortunately, most of them were negative, And it was targeted through the lens of stories of people having uh, pornographic videos made about them but they weren't actually in the video. And I saw it, it was actually through the lens of blackmail. People were, or organizations were creating these videos and they were going after people like school teachers. Hey, you know, fill in the blank with whatever the demand may be, or we're going to release this. And then that person, of course, has this catastrophic uphill battle to try to prove that the thing that people are seeing or could be seeing is not them, which sounds horrible. So I'd heard about it like that, but I tell you what, the first time I really had to stop and think for a second. My middle son, Tyler, was sitting on the couch on his phone, and he said, oh, Trump just got shot. And I remember thinking in the moment, stopping and thinking about it, and I said to him, hey man, before you actually believe that, make sure that you are looking at more than just a single source, because I think you and I can both agree Single source reporting is the most dangerous thing that we used to get overseas. Sometimes we would action it, but most of the time you're looking for multiple different avenues to confirm the information that you're getting. And that's, I, I actually, when I first heard him say that, that was how I got notified about the assassination attempt, I thought he was watching a deep fake. 
which caused me to pull out my phone. And then the first thing I did was start finding it in as many avenues as possible to confirm the information that I was seeing. Because that, for the first time, was when the thought of a deep fake actually stopped me in my tracks. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I would think that it would be, it, it would have to be something so catastrophic, something so big to actually impact, for example, political discourse or violence for people to actually pay attention to it. Because I think it happens every day, all the time, across all the platforms. I don't know if you remember this, but um, a few years ago, I, I took a photo um, that was Neil Curry's photo on an elk hunt. It was actually at Deseret. And that year I had like serious neck problems and I couldn't hunt. And so I took my face and I put it on Neil's body <laughs> in front of the elk and I posted it and, and, and I was semi sarcastic in the post. And I even tagged Neil and half the people who saw that got it. They thought it was funny. They were like, Oh, I can't believe it because Neil had just posted it. I just ripped away his photo and put my face on, on his face. But the other half of the people were like, man, that's epic, good hunt. And they clearly didn't read the actual post. And I, I thought to myself, I was like, oh my gosh, like half the people who, who read this believe that I bagged a massive bull elk. And the people who were messaging me on my personal cell phone that were friends, they're like, good job on the elk. I was like, did you read it? They're like, no, 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 I didn't really read it, but I saw the elk, he's a monster. I'm like, no, no, that wasn't me. It was a joke. And then I realized, like, if a deep fake gets out, let's say it's Trump or Kamala Harris saying something very specific, I don't even think it would matter because no matter what, once that information is out there, everybody, at least the majority, I think the majority, is going to believe what they saw initially. And even if you came back to them and you said, you realized that wasn't real, like that never happened, they, would, they, would, they wouldn't even care because they would probably already make up their mind and go, Oh, it doesn't matter anyways. My, my mind was already made up. Yeah, so that's, on to that's the, next the fear thing. Of, of deep fakes. It's like, it's so prevalent now, you would need a catastrophic event for people to actually pay attention and go, oh yeah, maybe we need some regulation. And honestly, and I'd, I'd like to get your opinion on it. I don't know if regulation, especially by the US government, is the right answer in anything, especially when it comes to something like this, because what's the, what's the way they enforce this? They just start arresting randomly people that they think violated a deep fake because they edited it or they said it a certain way. And that seems like it's a severe violation of our First Amendment rights. I mean, first off, the story you described is definitely hunting stolen valor. So let's acknowledge that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It for sure was. Officials are warning of a widespread cybersecurity attack. Frustrations and delays have continued as countless are still without power. <laughs> Market volatility is at its highest since the pandemic. There are a number of reports across the state. An unidentified crash. There is a downward grid in that risk. I mean, myself personally, I am not a fan of additional government power and the ability to overreach. And I'm not, I mean, you and I have known each other for a long time. I'm not an overly paranoid person. Um, I just don't want the government telling me what I can and can't do. And one of the topics I know we're going to talk about in a little bit is the letter that Zuckerberg, where he openly talked about the extreme amount of pressure from the party that was in power, specifically around things around COVID, and the government essentially making the decision as to what is real slash the truth and what is not. And the farther we've gotten away from those events, they were not exactly what I would call technically correct in their assessment, but they still wanted to have this ability to censor. So I also am not a fan of a government having the regulatory power in this, but I'm just, I mean, I'm thinking about this in real time as we're talking about it. I mean, what's the difference between a deep fake and some of these filters? that people use on social media platforms where you can, and I'm not talking about the ones where you can, you know, so you, somebody looks like a unicorn. I'm talking about just somebody, and I know why they do it, they, whether it's, uh, you know, they're concerned about what they look or they wanna change the way that they look or it's a competitive thing, like this person is using this filter so I have to use it to keep up with them. And 
It's also not a real expression of who they are. Some of them are very good, and you can't tell until you actually see some of these people in person. You're in your like, whoa, that is not exactly what I have seen presented to me on social media, which for clarity, my opinion is social media is not the real world. I think people should be very cautious on anything they see social media wise. But should these companies, if you're going to use these tools, should they be required to be watermarked? Should there be a disclaimer? Should we get rid of all of this bullshit? I mean, I personally, I think we drop all the filters from all social media. Life would be a lot better. And I actually think mental health disorders would be on the decline if we did that step alone. But I don't know. That's just me. What do you think? Yeah, I think I, I, I agree on that. Well, I, I agree because of like the transparency of telling the it's almost what fact checks was supposed to be. But then the fact check organization was deemed to be biased. So then you couldn't trust an actual trustworthy noted source. And so it, it seemingly in the metadata, um, you know where that picture or video came from. And that's the problem. It's in the metadata. It's not transparent to the, the person who's consuming it. But I think it would be something very easy to do is saying, hey, this, I mean, it's just like, um, it's like AI generating papers. Apparently now there's software that detects AI yeah. um, in essays that kids are trying to get away with in, in school now. And it's like, okay, so if there's a filter or a way to put it through it, is there a way, which I'm sure there, I'm sure there is, to put an image or a video through the processor to see if it's real or fake? One of the issues is consumers who are digesting uh, all their media at the speed of sound, essentially. I mean, they're at the speed of light, essentially. They're just taking it in. They really don't care where it came from. They're not looking at it. If they see an attractive person and it says they use the filter, they're like, I don't care. And they keep consuming and consuming. So I think that's that, that level of surface uh, filtration and regulation would be okay with me, especially if the software or the, the company or the social media platform is actually doing that on the up and up. I have the same opinion, just like you, that when the government gets involved, they're going to screw it up and they're going to be very deeply corrupt at some point, if not out the gate. And I think ultimately it comes down to deep fakes. If it causes significant catastrophe, violence, um, disaster, that's likely when we'll pay attention. And until then, I don't know if we will. I mean, I, I was like outraged when, when all these things were happening where Twitter and personalities that were influencers on social media were getting people to go out and riot and burn things to the ground. And there was no consequence for that. So, and, and that's not even a deep fake. That's just somebody getting away um, and, and, and biasly getting away with doing that. I did it and I got completely suppressed by Facebook. And the fact that Zuck is actually owning up to that, what does that mean? There's no consequence for it. It's like that, ultimately that's the problem. There's no consequence for it at all. So who knows, man? I mean, I, I'm scared because like the new iPhone that's coming out with, I think it's the iPhone 16. I think they make the announcement on that tomorrow, actually. I know where you're going with this. It come, it, they're talking about having chat GPT AI type interfaces rolled directly into your phone. Yeah. And who the hell knows what that means? I, I don't even use Google search. I don't use the internet really for anything when I'm trying to get information. I'm using chat GPT because it's, I mean, even to, even a year ago, it was decent. Now it's more accurate. I mean, dude, I, my, my child was sick the other day and I'm literally walking through the process on chat GPT on exactly the symptoms and and, and looking at potential options for seeking a higher medical care. And it's like, man, I, I don't trust the internet already. And I'm leaning more on AI. Imagine when your entire life tethers and filters through AI because your phone is, is AI generating. It's interesting that you said an additional third party app. Actually, you might not have said third party. I, I was thinking the same thing that you were. If there was a way to filter the information that we are consuming and it was, you were alerted to whether or not it was legitimate or unmanipulated, whether a filter or a, a deep fake to use the terminology that we're talking about. 
I think that that would be hugely impactful. I don't trust the company, the social media company in and of itself to do that. And I don't think the government is suited or tooled to do that either. So I think it would be, I would feel more comfortable if it was a third party application that didn't have an intrinsic tie monetarily like the platform does to, to monopolize people's attention. And maybe, I don't know, and again, this is, <laughs> I've never been uh, reached out to by an app developer because I don't know how to do any of this shit, but I would like to think like there's gotta be a way as technology increases that we could click something on our device. So in the background, a program is running and when you encounter something that has been manipulated, it just at least alerts you to that, right? And then you can, at least with that alert, Maybe a red flag goes up. Maybe it can give you a moment of pause before. My concern with deep fakes, somebody sees something that isn't real and it spurs immediate action before they have the clarification or investigation into what they're seeing is real. So maybe even just with an alert that would require the user to do a little bit more research, it would break that link. That would be my main concern. But I think it would have to be a third party item or app that was created. I think it's totally possible in the absence of that, though, in the modern era that we're living in, where this technology is enhanced and expanding, where would you point people to right now? Or what would you suggest to people so that they aren't duped by this stuff that isn't real? Yeah, that's the ultimate question. I was just thinking about that because, I mean, imagine you're a politician and photographs of you leak out that are inappropriate. You could just say they're deep fakes. I mean, you could literally just say everything that's being uh, uh, pushed out and disseminated isn't real and people would believe you. And even if it was real, they would believe you. And, and even if you knew the truth, um, you could literally just deny it. And then nobody would actually say, well, we've, we've, we've tested it and it's, it's actually real. You could just say, no, they're, they're, they're working with the government. They're colluding with the government and they're trying to, they're trying to scam me or scam you. And then you could just deny it. I think that overall speaks to the issue that all of this is, again, just creating further distrust in the government and, and technology and then blurring the line between what's actual real, what's actually real and what's fake. And so it's hard to believe what you see on the Internet as it is with technology completely immersed and integrated and how smart AI gets day to day, second to second, I, I think it'd be quite impossible for people to believe anything they see on their cell phone, on the internet, on a social media app. And it's like, man, who do we believe? And I mean, there's entire AI bot Instagram channels that are literally generating imagery and getting very good at it where people think the people in it are real. I mean, they're, 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 generating images of the person's life evolving and people are following along with that storyline and believing it's a real person. So it's like, who knows what to believe? I don't, I don't think there's a, I don't think it's going to get more clear. I think it's just going to get more murky and more blurry as we go on. Yeah. I think without or absent a technology that is evolving in at the same velocity and rate that can identify those things, I think that the human brain is not designed or evolved to catch those things that look exceptionally real. So my advice to people is consume whatever you want to consume. Look at whatever you want to cons you know, look at. If you find something that is earth shattering, troubling, perhaps that is, and probably something I would say that is really in line with one of your beliefs, I would take a beat, take a breath and try to make sure you can get it outside of the single source reporting model and look far and wide just to reconfirm that what it is that you are looking at is in fact real. In my own limited experience in doing this, I have found the vast majority of the times, especially something you like it. I mean, memes are amazing for not only humor, but also just pissing you off because they can be so powerful and the speed and velocity that they can get out of troll. You see those and you're like, you want to get pissed at it and you do a little bit of research. You're like, oh, that's total bullshit. It's not even actually real. And then you can like take a breath. It's like, poking a balloon and letting the hot air escape out of it. That's what I would recommend for people. Slow to, as, as this technology is increasing in velocity, I would almost rec recommend decreasing in your own personal velocity of not only acceptance, but specifically taking action on these things. It's just not everything is as it appears. Yeah, agreed. That's the best advice. I, I think the more 
convoluted and toxic and dramatic that social media gets, the more I try to disconnect and the happier I am. I mean, the more I try to dis disconnect from social media, from uh, technology, the happier I've realized I've become, uh, especially in the last few months. So yeah, that's, that's great advice. Now, the two women who were killed and found dismembered in Juarez on Sunday were from El Paso. On the southern border, there is a legal concept known as reasonable fear, a lifeline for those fleeing violence. A Texas couple was found tortured and murdered. Police say so far this month, 11 women have been killed in Juarez. And then their bodies or body parts offered up to Santa Muerte as an offering. She represents death. In this special Borderland docuseries, I take a deep dive onto true crime stories. Join me as we uncover the truth about the fear behind the crisis. This was a group of powerful people. Never been seen before in Mexico. Evidence of ritualistic elements. We ended up rescuing almost 200 kids. The discovery of multiple women in mass graves. They're almost in every state. When you put it together, you have an economic extortion map. But even more violent. 